And so the five things, regardless of what the National Institute of Standards and Technology says, or the International Organization for Standardization says, or any other framework that you may be required to use for security or privacy in your business, really boil down to asset management, access control, enterprise architecture, business continuity, and incident response. Now I say this knowing that the National Institute of Standards and Technology has a security control catalog that has 20 control families. But if I go to a small local community bank, that community bank doesn't care about 20 control families that are in a control catalog that has 650 controls if I do everything at the high watermark based on the risk that NIST perceives for an organization that has sensitive data, what that company cares about is what are our information and technology assets. You know, if you look at smaller frameworks like the Center for Internet Security Critical Security Controls, they have 18 control families instead of 20. But the first couple of items that you look at are all, access, are all asset management. Do you have an inventory of your information assets? Do you have an inventory of your information systems? Asset management is important because you have to know what you have before you can protect it. And if you have things that you don't know you have, it is very likely that you haven't protected what you didn't know existed because how do we know it was there? And so it, you, become, you become enveloped in this loop of illogical thinking if we don't know what we have because we can't apply limited financial resources to protecting what's important. You can't even actually answer the question what's important if you don't know what you have. You know, I have five servers, what's on them? Yeah, it's great to have an inventory of servers for people who still have data centers with servers, but it doesn't add any value if I don't know what's on the server, who it belongs to, how important it is, how do we use it to generate revenue, which then pays salary, benefits the bills, and generates profits for the owners and the shareholders. The answer to all those business concerns starts with what do we have and how important it is, and it demands that you have some inventory that is a complete record of all of your assets. Now from asset management, you can do other things. You can say, hey, do we have a change management process so that we know when an asset is added or removed? But if you're a small business, when was the last time a non-technical small business owner went to somebody and said, hey, help me create an inventory of all of my assets? I would be shocked if anybody who owns a business who is not a security person raises their hand, even if we had a million people in the room, because asset management is not something they teach in business school. I went. I do have a business degree, and we had no conversation about asset management for my entire MBA program. We talked about finance. We talked about operations. Nobody thought to have any conversation about do you know what you have and where it is and how important it is. The other thing that comes up that's very important and connected to asset management is access control. You cannot have critical assets and then let everybody in the world have access to them. The other thing that becomes very important that a ton of security people overlook, and we can have a um, huddle about it after the conference, I think there is not enough focus on enterprise architecture. Not from the perspective that we're building out a network and everything functions, but from the perspective of business process. If you think about the open group architecture framework or the Zachman framework, both of those frameworks and others like them force you to document your business process. How do I start? How do I end? What's all the magic in the middle so that we produce a desired outcome? And while enterprise architecture is not really a control in any of your security catalogs, if you're the owner of the business or you have significant influence, it is extremely important for people to understand how things should work so that you can compare the should to the actual and identify the difference. And so if I have a business process that says pay vendor, I should know step by step, how do I verify that I have an actual vendor? What button do I push? What does the process look like? Where does the money come from? Where does the money go to? Do we have a verification that it got where it was supposed to be? Enterprise architecture using those frameworks is gonna help you document the business layer, the technology layer, the operational layer, the network layer, and then you can add on top of that security. And so TOGAF doesn't really help you because it is an open framework that allows flexibility and customization, the Zachman framework asks you 36 questions about every business process. And I just mentioned one. But when you think about risks like business email compromise, 
not having a documented business process increases the likelihood that somebody in accounting is going to wire a lot of money to the Cayman Islands at 4.55 p.m. on Friday because that person in accounting got a message that purported to be from the CEO and we've got to do this at the last minute or we're gonna lose money. And now psychological pressure causes somebody to do something that leads to a significant financial loss. But the countermeasure to that is saying that we only do wire transfers if a form is filled out and then we have a way to verify that all of the approvals were in place if the transfer exceeds a certain amount. Uh, one of my favorite bankers is in the room. So Sam, raise your hand. So Sam can tell you a lot about financial fraud, but even when it's related to financial fraud, I will tell you that I personally have some interesting financial fraud things happening on my accounts at Sam's bank. But because of good documented process, I have not lost a ridiculous sum of money, which then causes me to turn into the bounty hunter that I've been trained to be, to go figure out who the heck is doing this, and then have a very strongly worded conversation with them. Process has saved me from losing money, and it's not a security thing, but it's a risk management thing. And it highlights the root of my argument that we're really focusing on reducing risk to an acceptable level, and cybersecurity is one of many risks that an organization faces, and if we do it well, our asset management and our access control and our enterprise architecture serves multiple purposes. So if you're having a problem getting your budget for security initiatives, talk about security in business terms, we get everybody on board, and maybe somebody else will give you their budget to produce an outcome that we care about. Um, if you are taking notes, item number four is business continuity. I cannot tell you how many businesses I have run into, large or small, that fail because there is an outage from which they cannot recover simply because they didn't plan. And I won't even use a cybersecurity example. Hurricane Sandy that went up the East Coast a couple of years ago caused 90% of the businesses not to be able to recover, not as a direct result of the hurricane, but as a direct result of not having a backup plan. Had nothing to do with cybersecurity attack, had everything to do with our office is flooded, we lost the computer, there was no backup anywhere else. And business continuity planning is actually not that difficult. There are standards, there's guidance, this room is full of professionals that even though their title may be cybersecurity, understand business continuity. The question is, if there is an outage, what is our plan to recover? Do we know where our data is? Do we have backup systems? Do we have a process to recover all of those items? And when we recover it, is it as secure in the recovery location as it was in the original location? Because that's the other place that a lot of people get in trouble, and all of these troubles are opportunities not to thrive, rather than thriving in the midst of uncertainty and calamity and despair. And having a good plan and having it practiced and documented allows you to say, you know, it is a shame about the hurricane, let me focus on serving people because I don't have the pressure and the worry of my business going out of business because we know how we're gonna recover. You know, putting a lot of these practices in place frees you from the worry and the concern and allows you to focus on what's really important. And I would argue that people are more important than property, but if I know my property is gonna be recovered, I can focus on the people. My final item is incident response, which is separate from business continuity. You do have to have a process for responding when you have a cybersecurity attack or a breach of personal information. Those items will put you out of business just because of the regulatory burden. There are consistent statistics over the last 10 years that say that two thirds of small businesses cease to exist within one year of a data breach or a cyber attack and is not necessarily a direct result of the cyber attack it is the outcome of loss of confidence and switching costs when you're dealing with small businesses. So now, you didn't know you were getting a business school lesson. But if I take something like Equifax, Equifax only has two competitors, and Equifax is a business-to-business -business organization, so even though they may have lost billions of dollars with the B as a result of their cyber attack, most of Equifax's customers are probably their customer because their competitors didn't offer something that Equifax did, and the stock price for Equifax, if you look three to five years down the road, is still higher than it was immediately after the breach. And it's because the switching costs, going from Equifax to one of their competitors, is extremely high. 
But if I'm using a small mom and pop shop that provides a commodity component and they have a data breach and they lose my information and it causes harm, well, there might be hundreds of other people that do the same thing. Whether your business is small or large, or you're on the board, or you're just in management, it is extremely important to have a plan to respond to a cybersecurity attack, because people are gonna find out eventually. It is extremely important to have a plan to respond to a breach of personal information, because there are legal requirements attached to that in the United States and in Europe and all over the world. And you wanna make sure you don't lose the confidence of your customers, because losing customers means you lose money and you're likely to go out of business.